we are a little bit more than two days into the Necropolis League start and my slash play right now is one day in 16 hours so I want to give you an update on how the league is going for me so far. So what I decided to do this time around is something similar to what I did last week, which is start with Heist and then transition into the BCR Memories. But last time I actually regretted transitioning into the Memories a little bit too early, so this time around I decided to stick with Heist a little bit more. And the build I decided to go with is Lightning Arrow Deadeye. And that's actually a very common question I've been getting is why I decided to go with Lightning Arrow for Heist. Isn't the Toxic Rain the best build for Heist? And to be honest, I don't think there is a single best build for Heist. Uh, the most important thing is just your movement speed. So as long as you have like 200-300% movement speed early on and you can kill monsters on your way, you're good to go. And I did Toxic Rain last time, so I just decided to switch things around and I wanted to play Lightning Arrow. And the build guide I was following is the Havox build guide, so I am gonna link his uh, video in the description. And now, after playing for almost two days, I swapped to a different version of Heisting build, which is no damage uh, ability build that right now has 620% movement speed. So just to show you, I use my automation skill, which is actually the new skill, and it helps with this build a lot. And I have 620% movement speed, and it does not use any damaging ability. So more about that build in a little bit, but first let me talk about early heist, because I do get a lot of questions on how do you uh, league start with heist. So let's go to Rogue Harbor, and first let's talk about the contracts. So what I always do is I start doing heist at level 60 because that's when you can start doing chaos recipe and I start buying contracts from Wakano. And what type of contracts you want to buy actually it depends a little bit on what do you expect from heist. So let me actually jump into my Maxwell guide that I wrote right before this league start and here you have a list of all rewards that you get from different contracts. So the two most important ones are the lock picking and demolition because they are going to give you a lot of currency items, jewelry and generic rewards from demolition. And generic is actually the most important one because it gives you a lot of currency and jewelry and some other things that are uh, very helpful for chaos recipe and so on. You can actually get a generic from other uh, type of contracts like engineering and perception. But from my experience, demolition uh, has them just way more. It is way more common in demolition than the other ones. So lockpicking and demolition are actually the best if you are planning to do heist just for a little bit to, to get yourself some uh, currency early on and you want to transition into something like mapping. And the way it works is you just go to uh, Wakano and you buy them for uh, orbs of chance and if you don't have chance orbs you might have some of the fusing orbs and you can buy orbs of chance from the vendor in town for fusings. So I would just go through and I would buy uh, here lock picking, demolition, and so on and so on. Here's another lock picking, and you would just run them. But this time around, I wanted to do heist for longer, which means I also wanted to do blueprints. So for me, uh, things changed a little bit because I wanted to get some reveals. So I also was doing counter thaumaturgy with Chayana, Perception, and Deception. These three give you uh, Chayana reveals, which are way cheaper than regular reveals. So I was doing all three of them. But if you reach level 70 and you uh, buy contracts from Wakano, which cap at level 67, they are no longer gonna give you reveals. So what I actually was doing is I was focusing more on the uh, deception, perception, and counter. I actually wasn't buying that many uh, deception because it gives kind of bad rewards. Uh, counter actually still gives you jewelry and currency, which is pretty good, and perception gives you generic and jewelry, so you still get pretty good amount of rewards from uh, these contracts, and I was doing them, uh, all of them before level 70. And if I run out of all of the counter and perception, that's when I was doing like picking and demolition. And when I leveled up, I would buy more and more of them. So after 70, I just had a lot of lock picking and demolition remaining. And that's when I uh, was doing all of them. Uh, so to sum things up, at level 60, I started buying all lock picking, counter, perception, demolition. I was doing counter and uh, perception after I ran out of them and I uh, didn't have enough experience to level up and buy more uh, contracts. I was doing lock picking and demolition. And then after level 70, once I stopped getting reviews from these contracts, I was just doing all the remaining lock picking and demolition. And I reached, I think, around level 75. And that's when I no longer was getting enough experience to level up to be able to buy more of these contracts. 
And that's when I started buying contracts, just some low level contracts that are above level 68 that would give me uh, reveals. And I was buying all of the counter perception and deception ones for between one to three chaos. And then I started doing blueprints. And when it comes to blueprints, you don't want to really do any blueprints below level 80 because the blueprints give a lot of bases and the base item level depends on the item level of a blueprint. So if you would get, let's say, simplex amulet or some kind of ring, that is extremely good, but it's level 75. I actually don't even know if you can get simplex amulet from lower uh, level blueprints, but let's say you would get, uh, you would have very low item level base and it would be way cheaper than level 80 plus preferably of course 83 but early on you might have to do uh, level 80 because there will just not be any 83 on the market so that's when i started doing blueprints and when it comes to revealing them what i always do is i just go to jayana i uh, look at the rewards because sometimes there is like not a single good reward so you might actually want to skip revealing uh, these uh, blueprints and when it comes to rewards, the ones that I'm looking at are currency, divination cards, the fragments, and there is also ultimatum. These are, in my opinion, the best rewards. And this league, actually, divination card has been nerfed. You only get two stacked decks per chest. So it's actually pretty bad. I kind of no longer look at the divination. It's kind of sad because it's pretty common. So currency, fragments, and ultimatum. So this one is actually pretty decent. This one has two currency and some divination, so it's fine. And this one has some fragments, so you can reveal it and markets right now cost around 500 uh, for one chaos so if you pay 3000 uh, markers from for each reveal you pay around six chaos per reveal and blueprints go for around 10 chaos and when you start the blueprint at the beginning it has always one wing so that one wing is 10 chaos so it is uh, always worth it to reveal additional ones but of course you have to run contracts which is additional time so it is uh, questionable if it is worth to reveal additional wings or you should just run one wing blueprint early on i would say definitely run with additional contracts and the reveals because you don't have that much currency but once you have a lot of investment you might just want to uh, blueprint rush what i call which is just buy a bunch of blueprints without any contract and reveals and just uh, run them with one wing and then I swap to the Wakano and I reveal some of the currency ones uh, up uh, 1.5k markers. If they go above that, I don't reveal them anymore. So this one I would reveal, which is uh, 1.5k, which is, this is 1.6, which is still okay. Uh, so you might want to reveal this one. This is 1.7, 1.8, so not that amazing. 1.8. This is 1.6 fragment, which is pretty good. Fragment now give a lot of scar ups, so you might want to reveal them. But let's also go for this one. And then it's pretty much done. And then you go to planning. And when it comes to planning, I don't really focus too much on which type of uh, rogue, mar rogue uh, to use. I only care about their level. Because the higher level they are, the faster they do their job, which means you can do these blueprints much faster. So I always just go with the one on the left, because that's going to be the one with the highest level. And I just choose all of them. And that's basically it. And your Brooklyn is good to go. Okay, so that's what I was going early on. And I was doing a lot of uh, contracts and blueprints. And most of my currency actually came from things like six things. I actually didn't get any good like replica item or uh, I didn't drop that many divines. I think I dropped maybe like one or two divines. And I managed to finally make around 10 divines, maybe 15 divines, and I was able to transition to this build. So now let's talk about my 620% movement speed build. Let's actually talk, go to the hideout because uh, I cannot use my uh, skills in the rogue harbor and just to show you again here is my movement speed and also I, I forgot to mention that you don't want to kill kitava i only go up until uh, act 10 i do all of the trials and uh, i don't kill kitava so i don't have the resistance penalty as you can see here i don't even have the pop device and uh, you can do highest easier this way you still actually can do uber lab as long as you reach level 75 but you of course don't have access to pantheon and some other things like crafting recipes from uh, atlas so it actually is very helpful to have a friend that sometimes can 
kill things for you uh, if you need them to. Okay, so let's ta start talking about the build. And for this, I actually forgot I have to go back to the Rogue Harbors because there are three things when it comes to this build uh, in terms of importance. And the most important thing is not your gear, it's actually your follower gear or rogues, whatever you want to call them. Because if you want to play this build, your followers have to do the job uh, fast enough that no nothing is interrupting them. And you can just run through and then this way you don't have to kill anything. So your damage doesn't matter at this point. So what you want to do is you want to gear up all of them, except for the hack, because he doesn't really matter. You want to have tier one job speed, which is between 18 and 20. So you want to have the uh, gear. I think this is what uh, this uh, slot is called. The brooch, which is also uh, tier one. The clock, again, tier one. And in the tool, which is actually the rogue specific. So this one is just for Harst, Hack, Tulina. This one is just for Tibbs and so on. This one is just for Tulina. Uh, you want plus one level of all jobs. And these actually require very high item level. So this one is 82, I think, minimum for job speed. And this is 83 minimum for plus one level of jobs. And I was just spamming them with alterations until I get it. And that's it. You don't really care about any other modifiers. You just want job speed and plus one. Because when you uh, have plus one, it increases the level from five to six. And the higher level, they do their job faster. And I believe this is basically multiplier to the increased job speed. So if you had increased job speed here, it, I think it would be worse than plus one because you have a lot of job speed, job speed in the other places. So when I was still playing Lightning Arrow, when I was doing uh, blueprints, I also tried to do contracts high item level so that both from contracts and blueprints, I was dropping high item level gear for my followers because I just couldn't buy any bases because uh, no one is really selling them. And I actually even started selling them myself. So I posted here uh, for 20C, just a bunch of them. And I sold a few of them. So I did actually make a, some additional money from this. So yes, you want to have your gear uh, basically the way it is here. And you want to do that on every single follower. I actually still haven't done that on Nanet. Uh, it has 20% job speed everywhere. It doesn't want have one here and here on Niles. Simply because I'm lazy. I'm probably going to do that today. I'm going to buy uh, two remaining pieces of gear. So it, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you have maybe tier two everywhere, uh, it's probably still fine. But plus one is definitely very, very helpful. So yeah, your follower gear is the most important thing. Your second most important thing you might think is going to be to just stack as much movement speed as possible, but it's actually not. It's actually defense, because if you have a ton of movement speed, it doesn't really matter uh, if you have it, because you're still going to die from time to time, because your uh, follower, they are going to open the doors. You still have to wait a little bit, and in that time, it's very easy to die. So I did focus uh, heavily on defense. So what I did is I got 100% spell suppression, which is mostly for my tree. I do have some spell suppression here. I have the uh, Mage Bane. I don't have spell suppression here, but if you are missing some spell suppression, you can still take uh, some of these points. And I do think I have spell suppression maybe on some pieces of gear. Actually don't. So yeah, I do have 100% uh, spell suppression. And always also look at your spell suppression without this passive, because um, you want to have 100% spell suppression while you are not on full life so i'm gonna let's say remove this and i have 95 percent which means that when i'm not on full life i would have 85 so that's why i'm going for additional 15 percent here so i'm actually at 110 percent so without this i have 100 and when it comes to other defenses i do have of course my resistances cap chaos resist cap very important i do have freeze immunity from my flask you don't really need other elements it would be helpful but you don't really need it and bleed from my life flask and when it comes to armor and evasion with, with all of my flasks being up i have thirty-six thousand armor and seventy thousand evasion so i am pretty tanky and i don't think i died a single time in blueprint after i swapped to this uh, gear the only thing that can kill me i actually just remembered i died one time is the mines on the ground because they deal a ton of damage very often you can just run through them especially if you use molten shell which is another thing i'm using it myself i'm not auto casting it and i always use it when i'm about to enter some kind of dangerous area and you can just uh, life flash through the mines but it's still pretty dangerous i prefer to just uh, wait for them to be detonated by the uh, follower.
Okay, so when it comes to armor and evasion, how am I reaching this high amount of armor and evasion? First of all, I am Pathfinder, and I do have the Jade and Granite Flask with armor and evasion. It doesn't really matter on which one you have percentage armor and evasion, but you just want to have that. And I do have the Queen of the Forest, which gives quite a lot of evasion. I also do have Haste, Grace, and determination and also defiance banner so grace determination defiance banner give a ton of armor and evasion if i didn't have enough aura i probably would just drop haste because it gives you some movement speed but it's only 16 percent and as you can see it's quite a lot of mana so you can remove it and i also have uh, vitality am i missing any additional auras i don't think so i also have clarity for mana regeneration but more on that in a second and I think that's it when it comes to defense. You want to have, of course, evasion in every single slot because it helps with the mastery. This one, 15% chance to suppress, suppress spell damage if you have evasion on every slot. And I think that's it when it comes to defense. So now let's talk about the most important thing, which is the movement speed. So how do I uh, get this high amount of movement speed? So first of all, you want to be Pathfinder, of course, so that your flasks are active pretty much always. I'm going to leave them uh, on and they are being reused at the end. You're going to see that sometimes they will drop, so sometimes you have to re uh, reapply them, but most of the time they're going to be active like, almost always. And you, you can also get uh, Master Surgeon so that your lifeless gives you a regeneration, but I just don't want to use my lifeless too often. So I just went for uh, two small points for flask charges gained and flask effect. And you also want to stack flask effect and flask charges like anywhere you can on the tree. So here you can also get some over here and here if you have some points, but I didn't. And I went for medium class jewel for alchemist genius, which gives you 20% uh, flask charges and 10% flask effect. And fasting, which gives 20% flask charges gained. And you also here get some flask duration. Uh, for my small cluster, I do have just Sublime Form and uh, Mana Reservation Efficiency because I needed this for mana. I believe if I had a Knight on level 4, I wouldn't need this, but right now I do. And speaking of mana, uh, another thing when it comes to speed is your auras. Uh, haste, of course, is pretty good. You want Grace, uh, Queen of the Forest, and a bunch of evasions. So you reach at least 45k evasion for the maximum movement speed from uh, Queen of the Forest. And Perpetia gives a lot of movement speed. It can give you up to 20, but the reason why it doesn't give me 20 is because uh, I bought one for one divine with 20% increased reservation efficiency. So for Defiance Banner, Clarity, and Vitality. I also bought a bunch of Devotos Devotion and I crafted them for the 90% cost as an under reservation multiplier. And here I am using Knight on level 3 with Grace, Determination, and Haste. So that's how I was able to uh, get all of my auras. I also am using Sovereignty here and Charisma and the Influence. So uh, Sovereignty is here. So you do need a lot of mana reservation and also 12% uh, in here. But like I said, if I have level 4 or preferably even level 5, I probably would be able to drop a little bit of uh, reservation efficiency. So the next thing I want to talk about are my skills. So for uh, movement, as you can see now, I do have only 260% uh, uh, movement speed. If I use my flasks, I have 100%. But if I put on automation, suddenly I have 620. So you get a lot of uh, movement speed from your skills. So what are the skills I have on automation? First one is the phase run. And this is very important. It's going to give you, well, first of all, phasing. So you'll be able to run through the monsters. But remember, anytime you use, let's say, Molten Share or Flame Dash, it's going to interrupt the phase run, which means for a few seconds, you're not going to be phasing and it can get you killed. To solve that, you can use Water Eye, which gives you phasing when you have haste. But as of right now, I didn't want to invest into that. And the second skill is the Berserk. So Berserk, the way it works is you lose a rage per second. As you can see here, when I have Berserk, I'm losing a rage, but it gives you a ton of movement speed. I am missing uh, Enhance here, level 3 or 4, simply because I couldn't buy any. There were not uh, none on the market. There was Enhance level 4, I think, but I do was uh, 10 divine, so I didn't want to buy it. And I support it with increased duration for the uh, phase run, automation, of course, and the inspiration for reduced mana cost. Because... What you want to do is to sustain your rage, you want to use the uh, Little Pride with the Chainbreaker. So Chainbreaker uh, gives you rage. Uh, it transfers your mana regeneration 
per rate. So you want to stack mana region. Uh, so that's why I am using the clarity. And to help with your uh, mana regeneration, you can use a bunch of items. For example, I'm using right now Reg, which is a very good item for flasks. It just gives you movement speed, flask duration, and reduces your flask charges, but it's fine. It also gives you some life and resist. But what you can use instead is uh, just to show you uh, here. Let's go to belts. No, it's not here. Where do I have it? It is here, Fizzbind. It is also pretty good for uh, flask charges, give you 50% increased flask charges gained, but it also gives you 50% increased mana regeneration. So you can use Fizzbind, but as of right now, my rage region is good enough, so I don't need it. That's why I went with the rage, which also gives you some movement speed. On top of that, on your rings, you can get two mods actually chosen, which gives, which gives you life and mana, uh, flat mana per second, and also suffix up to 69% increased mana regeneration. I need to actually uh, catalyst them for a 20% mana and life mod, so I would get even more, and it would also reduce my non-channeling uh, skills. It would be, instead of 7, would be 8. I have the same thing on the second ring, and also on amulet. I only have the percentage mana, I don't have the flat. And for... Uh, sustaining your uh, rage it is usually good enough you can also get some on the tree like um not here but here you get uh, some increased mana regeneration and so on uh, here i don't think it gives regeneration it just gives maximum mana so yeah uh, for me this was good enough but like i said if you want more you can get it on belt you can probably get it in some other uh, slots but for me it was good enough and for all of the remaining slots that I didn't talk about, I'm using Tevoto for just movement speed and, like I said, for a reduced mana cost implicit, uh, Ichimonji for increased effect of puffs on you and mana reservation, Gloves, just life resist, evasion, and life regen, that's basically it. And for life regen, you want to use Vitality and just life regen on some pieces of gear. I think I only have it here. Do I have it on boots? I also do have 40 on boots, so that's pretty good. And boots, just movement speed and movement speed you haven't been hit recently. And instead of just having life uh, as a mod, I instead uh, crafted life for a little bit less than a life than you can get normally, but it also gives regenerate for mana per second. And as an implicit, I have uh, increased cooldown recovery rate of travel skills. Without this, I almost would be able to have my phase run up all the time so i needed this mod i also am missing uh, action speed i'm missing some spell suppression here i'm missing a bunch of uh, things still so this is not a uh, perfect build yet i can definitely reach uh, i did test it last week and i definitely can reach up to thousand percent movement speed but of course it would require very high investment and for the jewels i am using triple uh, transcendent spirit which gives you movement speed per dexterity and here you can see how much movement speed it gives so this one gives 24 percent this one gives 19 percent and this one gives 18 percent and to be able to use it you also need to take every dexterity node in this area so that's why i'm taking these two here well, that's why i'm taking this and in here i'm taking this you could also technically take this point but it is a little bit too far, three points, I don't think it's really worth it, so I decided to not take it. And yeah, I think that's it when it comes to the uh, build. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is actually the blueprint that I just bought, uh, just to show you the gameplay, how do you play with this build. And for the abilities, the only abilities that you are uh, using are the decoy totem, and the Void Sphere. So I guess I didn't talk about them. Void Sphere with the increased AoE and increased AoE with Decoy Totem and Life Tap. Oh, right, that's one last thing I forgot to talk about is your mana cost when it comes to skills. Because when you use Chain Breaker, your skills are also gonna cost Rage and you no longer regen any mana. So if, let's say, I remove Life Tap from here, I use my Totem. Uh, I just lost mana, it costs 25 mana, and that mana doesn't regen, and now I no longer can use it, I don't have enough mana, and my mana doesn't regen, so basically can never use a uh, decay totem again unless I swap zones, so that's why I'm using a life tap for this, but for the automation, so for the berserk and the uh, phase run, that's why I'm using uh, inspiration, I'm using minus mana cost here, here, and on the amulet, and I also was even thinking about using this for 10% reduced mana cost, but as of right now, I don't need it. 
Uh, so my uh, phase run right now, just to show you, costs, where is it here? Zero mana and seven rage. And the Berserk, which is here, only five rage. If I remove the inspiration, it actually increases the cost of mana. Mm, so now it costs four mana, but it reduces cost of the rage. So in perfect scenario, you actually would want to uh, not use inspiration, but you would have to reduce your mana cost by additional four points, which I actually can do if I uh, use Catalyst on these three slots. That would give me plus one, plus one, and plus one. And the remaining one would be from the uh, this mastery, but I would have to drop mana reservation. So there is some solutions to that, but for now, this doesn't work. And by the way, in the past, you would just use a, a flask with reduced mana cost, but it no longer exists. So we cannot do that. And my game crashed when I was uh, recording the blueprint, so let me uh, show this again. So at the beginning, you have to remember to use automation and all of your flasks, and you have to reapply them when uh, sometimes you lose them or when you change the zones. And here there are the lasers. So with the lasers, most of the time I can just run through them. But just to show you, I almost always try to use Molten Shell right before I enter the laser. So I'm going to use it here and yeah. There is no issues with uh, lasers. And when I run through the blueprint, I still open some of the chests, like the currency ones. Here are uh, divination. I'm going to open them. I am not revealing divination one, but if I find some of them on the way, I still like to open them. And as you can see, my defense is good enough. Sometimes I have to use Molten Shell and uh, Life Flask, and you don't have to kill anything. Sometimes your followers get stuck. Um, like between the monsters and you have to like maybe like run away, go back and so on. It does tend to be annoying sometimes, but most of the time they are good with opening things. And that's why the job speed is so important. Then at the end, at the end I choose rewards. So here there is not a single good item. So I would just run back. And that's why movement speed is so helpful. Oh, here I actually almost died. I didn't uh, use my motor shell. So yeah, you still can die, but is very unlikely to happen. And now let's go to another one. I'm not going to show you all of the wings. I'm going to show you one more. Here are fragments. Uh, I want to show you what happens when lockdown happens, because that's when uh, your job, job speed is going to be the key, because there's going to be a lot of monsters next to the chests or uh, doors that you're going to be trying to open. Here there is, oh, there is actually a lot of good rewards. There is a fragment currency and even more fragments. Sometimes it's actually fine to open all of the chests, even if you go above full alert level, because uh, maybe you don't have any good reward at the end, or you can just run up to the reward because before the timer runs out, uh, so you are still good uh, when it comes to the alert level and picking up all of the rewards. So maybe that's actually going to happen this time around. Because I think I'm going to be full after one chest. Let's open one of them. And yeah, I'm going to be full. So now I'm going to run to the reward. Uh, stabilizing Scepter, that's actually a decent one. Uh, this is six, no, it's five link, binding, bad item. So here I'm going to pick Stabilizing Scepter. But first I'm going to go back. I'm going to open this chest. And now I'm going to run back. Pick Stabilizing Scepter. Oh, I don't have inventory space. And now I'm going to pick these rewards. Eh, I don't have space for them. Let's remove this. Okay. And I'm going to run back just to make sure I don't die. Use Molten Shell. And here you want to use your Decoy Totem. So that monsters attack Totem instead of the follower. And if you still have uh, more issues, you can use your decoy totem and make sure to use it like away from your follower, not right on top of it. And then you also can use the void sphere. So it, it sucks all of the monsters. Sometimes you might have to like run around and so on. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit more dodgy and your follower is just constantly interrupted. But usually with combination of void sphere and decoy totem, uh, you can manage. And most of the time you just run. So it's a pretty fun way of doing heist, especially if you want to do just heist. The only one bad thing about this build is that if you want to do literally anything else in the game, you cannot do it because you are not killing anything. So make sure before you do this build that you actually want to run heist for longer. 
And in terms of what I'm gonna do now, I'm probably gonna run, run highs, maybe for like one, one more day. I do actually quite enjoy highs right now, but I also want to uh, swap to doing some other things. So I need to farm uh, at least enough currency to be able to play, uh, to make a different build. And the scepter is only 15k or so. It's actually the worst out of all of the free scepters that you can get. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.